Hello YouTube, Dave here. This little device in my hand is called an automotive short circuit detector. I built it from Radio Shack parts for about $20. It's a device designed to investigate automotive short circuits. So I'm going to show you how I built it and why I built it and how it works. And I'll talk about some fundamentals of how you investigate an automotive short circuit. Okay, there are two types of common automotive short circuits. The first is the so-called blown fuse. And this is a situation where the current draw is so high that the fuse ends up frying and then the circuit is blown. Uh, that's a more common one. And then the second is the parasitic drain. And that's a situation where the current draw is low enough that the fuse doesn't blow. And of course, a diagnosis of this one is going to be much more difficult. I'll talk about each of these in turn. Okay, the most common presentation is going to be a blown fuse. So suddenly so something doesn't work. It might be suddenly the lights in your car don't work, or suddenly the car doesn't run because the fuel pump fuse is gone. Some sudden loss of function in the vehicle. And oftentimes the uh, first uh, clue is how this presents. So for instance, you dropped a coin down the power module in the um, power apparatus and suddenly that won't work. Now your first step is usually to go to the fuse box and there are two of them. In this vehicle there's one under the hood and one in the engine compartment and the first clue is often in the back of the fuse box telling you which each fuse does. And then generally you go down um, looking at the likely fuses and you test them out to see how they work. Now I'm using a power probe here but you can just pull them out and look at them as well if you don't have one of these. Okay now to test individual fuses uh, you can uh, simply pull the fuses out and test each one individually or you can use a multimeter or you could just visually inspect the fuses if you don't happen to be near any equipment. I'm going to use um, the so-called power probe and the power probe gives a tone depending on whether you're at um, the positive side of the battery, the voltage potential of the positive side of the battery or the negative side. And Most fuses are on the positive side but some are on the negative side. So this fuse Here's on the negative side of the circuit, and so you get a green light, a tone. Um, and the important thing is that it's the same on both sides of each fuse. So this fuse here is on the positive side, and so I get a positive tone, and it's the same on this side. And so you can easily go down and uh, look at each individual fuse. You can see these fuses are very much amenable to that kind of thing. So here's another one, positive, and look at that. This fuse is not, it's positive on one side but not the other. Whereas a normal fuse, positive, positive. So let's take that fuse out and have a look at it. This is likely the fuse that's bad. And indeed, this fuse is bad obviously. You could test that with a multimeter if you wanted to. Now that we've identified the problem, let's work on finding a solution. Of course, the biggest problem with an automotive short circuit is that the fuse blows before you have a chance to identify the problem. And of course, the reason the fuse blows is there's too much current. And so to reduce the current and allow the fuse to last a little longer, you add resistance. Secondly, an ideal tool would substitute a circuit breaker, which has a reversible interruption for irreversible fuses so you don't have to replace so many fuses. Third, it's nice to have a kill switch so you can hook up these circuits safely. And fourth, and most importantly, you want to add a light or a buzzer, some kind of a noise that tells you that the short is ongoing. What this does is it allows you to carefully identify um, the areas that are suspect. So for instance, one of the commonest forms of a short circuit is where bare wires meet the engine frame going through doors, etc. And what you'd like to do is you'd like to be able to uh, chase those wires down and move them. And as you move them, the short should cut in and out, and so the buzzer should cut in and out, pointing you to the area where the short circuit is happening. Let's see what this tool looks like. Okay, here's what I came out with. This uh, circuit is designed to be put in series in the uh, circuit in question. I've got a 15 amp breaker and a switch. It doesn't matter which order these are in. Uh, both in series and then in parallel I've got a light and a buzzer. I brought the light and buzzer in parallel because I wanted to keep the total resistance low 
and also for uh, high resistance circuits I wanted to have at least one side to be functional and so if there was a difference if one fell out for one reason or another then the other the, the lighter buzzer would uh, still be functional okay so this is my uh, circuit tester here and you can see I've done something um, that might seem different uh, in terms of my attachment points. These are little pieces of sheet metal that I've soldered onto wires and then the wires in turn are hooked into these um, wires that go to the circuit tester joint. And there's one for the positive and one for the negative side. And this allows me to easily um, put this uh, circuit detector in series uh, to the circuit using the fuse insertion points. And so what I'll do is I'll uh, slide each of these down into the fuse receptacle and that'll put the circuit tester easily in series with the circuit. Now I'm going to show you the short circuit detector in a practical situation. This is a made up situation just so I can demonstrate it. The horn circuit is the one I've chosen just because I can get at it fairly easily. Um, complicating the horn circuit is the fact that it's run with a relay and I don't want to use the relay and so I've actually bypassed the relay uh, so that I don't have a switch in there and so my circuit detector goes in the place of the fuse and the horn is actually uh, taken out so I can just assess the wiring between the horn and the uh, fuse. So to hook up this circuit tester to the system I find the uh, fuse receptacle that I'm looking at and I take these two spades and I slide one in one side and then I slide the other in the other side. And of course you got to be careful not to touch the two together. And voila, we're hooked into our circuit in series. Okay, so I want to show you an example of uh, this circuit tester in action. And so what I've done is I've uh, set up the horn um, circuit. Now the horn relay is a little bit of a complicating issue and so I'd like to take that out of the equation. And so what I've done is I've taken out the horn relay and I've hot wired the horn so we're just working on the horn circuit itself. So I've got my uh, circuit tester uh, in, the, uh, in series with the circuit uh, through the fuse and uh, I've got it turned off right now through the circuit and uh, I've uh, taken the horn uh, out of the circuit just to make it a, a, a situation where I'm just testing the wiring that goes to the horn. And so I flick the switch on and what I have is I've got current running through the circuit. So what I know uh, based on this finding is that there is uh, current flowing and so there's a short somewhere in the system and now it's a issue of finding it. So I've got both a light turned on and also an audible alarm that tells me that yes there's circuit uh, uh, current flowing through the circuit and now it's a matter of uh, testing the, the circuit. And so what I'll do uh, now is I'll uh, trace the wiring backward and see if I can detect the uh, area of abnormality. Okay you can see now here's the the two horns and I've got them both disconnected to isolate that the situation that I'm just looking at the wiring itself and you can see here that I've hot wired the um, connector point where the horn makes connection and when I discontinue that of course the circuit uh, tester turns off and so you can imagine a situation where if I've got wires that are uh, hooked in together or, or shorting out to the chassis that uh, as I get close to the abnormality I wiggle the wires and all of a sudden the uh, circuit tester breaks in and out. Okay here's the materials list. This is pretty straightforward to build and you could do it in an afternoon. Now I should uh, mention that I don't mean to imply that what I've done here is particularly original or creative and in fact you can buy a circuit tester like this for about ten dollars more. So I guess it depends on how much uh, you value your time and how interested you are in building something like this. Furthermore, you can uh, upgrade um, this idea to uh, use a radio transmitter type device to better define the area of abnormality and of course that kind of situation ups the ante in terms of cost as well. That said, I think this little device does its job and 
I've been happy with how it's working. Thanks for watching.